Hamites, modern Africans, sold Israelites, modern Negroes, into captivity. We are not African. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rabbi Kodash, Dabon, some of my elders at Great Millstone, single honors to the elect, peace and blessings to the one third, and confusion the phases in the four corners of the earth. Shalom. Wong. Article from Black Enterprise Ghana and other African nations who enslaved and sold blacks to Europeans to formally apologize. I read that verbatim. There's no such thing as black or white people on earth. Either you have melanin or you lack it. And there is a clear distinction between all nations on earth. Okay. And you you always hear the same rhetoric when Esau don't want to take responsibility for them bringing us into captivity. When I say Esau, modern day white man, woman and child, so-called white man, woman and child or Caucasian, I should say. They'll be quick to say, oh, your own people sold you into slavery. So, you know, that'll be like that'll be like me robbing my brother to give money to Esau. You're still an accomplice. But how about this? For one, we know it's not it's not um, us who did it. It was a other dark skinned nation of people. All right. Even when you go back during the time of um of Moses when you had when the Israelites was in the captivity, we all were dark skinned people. The Lord's people were never uh um Caucasian looking, so so to say, right? We talking about millenniums ago. A millennium is a thousand years, right? So how the hell can they claim to be those people today? Before I continue, there is an Egyptian president by the name of Gamal Abdel Nasir, he said, he was saying this to the, the Jays at that time, the small hats at that time. I think it was a 1952 quote. He said, you will never have peace here because you left here black but came back white. So evidently he knew something that a lot of people in the world didn't know. But anyway, let's get back to it. So, Exodus 11 and 7, this, you know, the Lord said the difference between the Hebrew Israelites, the Negroes today, and the Africans, all right, who will be the Hamites. Exodus 11 and 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now let's get to the article, which I will leave in the description box. Jumping down, it's um the quote. It says, quote, it's time to say what needs to be said to all African diaspora and we must have the conversation and resolve our actions and inactions as rulers of our kingdoms during the transatlantic slave trade, which is deeply regretted, <laughs> unquote, as expressed by Nana Abaxi Ampa the first, all right, a Pagihan of Asabu Kingdom, Ghana, founder and president of Obo Kisi University of Excellence. First and foremost, there are a lot, there are plenty of Hebrew Israelites that was living in the West Coast. All right? Plenty. Because we fled from Roman persecution centuries ago, millenniums ago. It also fled from other other nations. Okay, matter of fact, um, allow me to get that right now. Since I mentioned it, I'll get it right now. This is an excerpt from the book called From Babylon to Timbuktu, A History of Ancient Black Races, Including the Black Hebrews. Once again, we're not black, but I'm reading verbatim. Rudolph R. Winsor. This is an excerpt from page... 84, if I'm not mistaken. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, 
many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated, pay attention, that over one million Jews fled into Africa. Fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery, the slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. I read it verbatim. So, in other words, millions of Jews, Hebrew Israelites, fled Africa. So, who was it that was being sold into slavery? The Hebrew Israelites, Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, the 68th verse, going into slavery again on ships. Okay? Now, going back to the rest of my slides. This is the um, individual Nana Obokisi, if I'm not mistaken. And in his Instagram post, it said, Have you heard that the king of Asabu traditional area, Omanheni Ak Akataki, Dr. Amanfi the, the seventh, has set aside 5,000 acres of free land near Cape Coast, Ghana, for the descendants of kidnapped and enslaved Africans who were forcibly removed from the continent so check this out i swear man this this is why the bible is a living organism it's so real now they want to pay us back for putting us into slavery this is a biblical prophecy this is joel chapter 3 verse 1 through 8 pay attention y'all for behold in those days and in that time when i shall bring again the captivity of judah and jerusalem Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, the nation of Israel consists of so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans. But it's not a color thing. That's just a um a guide to how we looked originally. But you're gonna have Israelites that look like all nations under the under the sun. I made a video on that earlier this week. But I'm, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna continue on. Verse two. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. If you ever just go online, type in transatlantic slave trade map and you will see the triangle route, the middle passage and going through the Atlantic. All right. That's how they scattered us. And how did they part our land? You have the Jays over there, the small hat, still fighting against the Palestinians. That's why I say the Bible is a living living organism. As we speak, it's living and speaking as it, as it is right now. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. All right? Listen now. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon, and, forgive me, and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Right here, 5,000 acres, free acres, they say, of those who were sold and kidnapped. That would be the Hebrew Israelites. So you're trying to recompense from what you've done. But the Lord said, no. Verse 5, because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. They remind me of the ark. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. The Grecians. Remember I read that excerpt about um, Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian, right? Weren't they Greco-Romans? Wouldn't they be considered so-called white people? This is in the Bible, people. So the Canaanites, which would be, uh, I think that's the grandson of Ham, or the youngest son of Ham. I don't think it's the grandson of Ham. The Canaanites is where you will find the land of Israel today. It was known as the land of Canaan. Remember, the Lord pushed them out and gave us that land, which is the land of milk and honey. Okay? So you... Have sold us to the Grecians. So in other words. Hamites. Modern day Africans. Sold Israelites. The modern day Negroes into captivity. 
you sold us into the hands of the so-called white man. That's why if you ever watch Roots in the beginning when they're chasing us, Junta Kente, and the rest of us, the Mandigo tribe, you will see dark-skinned men running with so-called white men. <laughs> Those are Hamites running with the so-called white men, not us. That's why I said it. I would tell you this lie. Oh, you sold your, you sold each other into slavery. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Stop it. Verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, America and all over the world, and will return your recompense upon your own head. We don't care about your 5,000 acres. Because Ezra, in the book of 2 Ezra, the 6th chapter, the 5th verse on the 50th, fourth verse on down says if the earth be made for our sakes so in other words the earth made for our sakes five thousand acres ain't gonna cut it buddy <laughs> it's not gonna cut it anyhow <clears throat> verse eight and i will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of judah and they shall sell them to be sabians to a people far off for the lord have spoken it so, in other words, you're going to go into captivity just like you put us into captivity. This is Psalms 2 and 8 through 9. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Once again, 5,000 acres not going to cut it, buddy. Verse 9, thou shalt break them with a the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. That's how you, that's going to be your recompense. And also, uh, him being from Ghana, so to say, if you look here on this map, African map, so to say, Bight of Benin, that's the area right there that's talking about by the Gold Coast, okay, where the vast majority of us went into captivity. You see right here, major coastal regions from which captives left Africa, all right? Now, to show you that the Hebrew Israelites fled from Roman persecution and other persecutions into the northern parts of Africa. What look at this word here. Oyuda, if I'm not mistaken. O U I D A H. If you just take the O and the I away and put a J in front of the U, that's Judah. And it says the social history of a West African slave in port, seventeen twenty seven through eighteen ninety two. Hence Hebrew Israelites, the kingdom of Judah. Look at this. A monument overlooks the beach of I'm going to just say, uh, I'm going to say it right. Oyuda, I hope I'm saying that right. Where slaves were once packed into ships. Benign UNESCO, La Porte du Non Retour. In other words, the port or the door of no return. Once we went through there and got on those, on those ships, it was over, man. Look at it. You can look, look at it. They, 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 listen. They literally is showing you like, listen, y'all are the people of the Bible. This is you. This is Deuteronomy 28, 68 right here. You should go into slavery by ships. This is us, y'all. Man, call lawyer you lady, how about Shemiah Shai? Because the lost sheep of the house of Israel has been found. And our captivity will soon be over. 1747, map of the kingdom of Judah in Africa. <laughs> this map was created in 1747 by English cartographer Emmanuel Bowen as part of a collection. He was a renowned map maker with a reputation for being accurate. Here on his map of Negro Land, Africa, he notes, quote, the kingdom of Judah, unquote, as the, quote, the slave coast, the slave coast, unquote. And, hum, what do you see down here on the map? If you look down under where it says Ghana, Ghana, kingdom of Benin. Hmm. Man, if you look closely, I can see right there it says or wider. Judah or wider. Man, you can't make this up, man. Koholoyin la Yahweh ba Shema Shai ba Shira Kakadash. But listen, not only the African, all you heathen nations. I also got information on the Arab slave market where they were slave selling us as well. Going back to Joseph being sold by the Ishmaelites and to the Egyptians. Hmm. First Maccabees 2 and 9 through 10. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Her infants are slain in the streets. Her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation have not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoil? So all you heathen nations are going to get it. 
Because even though we were sold by the so-called um, white men and the Africans who are Hamites, the only reason why we why they would continue to keep us into servitude continuously for centuries because you other nations kept buying the goods. You all had your hands in it, right? But the Lord's going to redeem us. Nonetheless, before I proceed, I want to bring out some quick information. I didn't mean to make this too long, but I have to get my points across. Now, this is from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. It show you, even these, these biblical scholars know the so-called Negro in America is the Hebrew Israelites, that we're not African. Check this out. Definition of Ham, which is one of the sons of Noah. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. <clears throat> Definition of Ham in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood. And one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor, which means the father, of the dark races, not the Negroes. What? Read it again. He became, this is Ham. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Hmm. You can't make this up. All right, get back to my precepts, and I'm gonna close out soon. This is um Isaiah chapter fourteen, verse one through four. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, Israelites, and will yet choose Israel, not all nations, and set them in their own land. Not a Balfour declaration, not a state of Israel. The Lord is going to put us in our own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Who are the strangers? The Israelite foreigners. All right. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Here comes that recompense right here. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Hmm. In the Bible, people love Psalms, right? Didn't it say in Psalms, the second Psalms, the eighth verse, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. So you heathens put us, in, you heathens put us into captivity. Now you shall be put into captivity. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, America, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? And call the Lord in like Yahweh by Shem Yahweh by Shem Kadash. With that being said. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So with that being said, I pray you was edified and fed. Stay in the spirit. Don't fear it. Just endure it. Ask for forgiveness. Pray without ceasing. Stay humble. Remain diligent. Quam Allah. Wolf of a ball, shallow arm.